this is Ten Reasons Why Show. Ten Reasons Why Woo! Show. Yeah. Yeah. An exciting one, too. Today we have a very exciting show. My but favorite. First, my favorite. Let me get the more important thing. <laughs> I'm Sam Labadi, your humble host. Your other humble host is Sema Batuk. And the beautiful, lovely Scott Tommaso oh, is also a host. Sam. You got the beauty. Sam's obviously drank too much already. <laughs> That's right. I've been drinking. <laughs> you may be wondering why we have these uh, l wonderful libations in front of us. Libations they are, yes. Uh, because we have a special guest with us today. Yes. And now let's introduce him, shall we? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> this is my friend, co-worker, and... All around great guy, Chris Roach. He's a expert on beers and other things, as well as uh, making amazing drinks uh, and designing all kinds of strange drinks and everything. And uh, so basically, I'm an alcoholic. Is, is that what you're trying? <laughs> I, I know. I <laughs> Today we <laughs> said it, and I didn't. Uh, <laughs> Today. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about craft brewing, which is one of my favorite topics. One of that we've favorite. done. And, and before we do, first of all, welcome, Chris. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Welcome, Chris. Salute. Yeah. Yeah. Salute. 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 And right. maybe we can tell our, uh, you know. Yeah, what are we drinking? What are we drinking? What, what is, is this? Drinking? Well, this is an Alpha King Pale Ale uh, from Three Floyds Brewery. It is uh, a very mild kind of, it's, it's got the nice hop characteristic. It's just a very refreshing beer overall. It is. Um, How much alcohol is in this? Because I got to tell you, I had one <laughs> swig of this and I'm already buzzed. <laughs> uh, I, I believe this one's around five or six alcohol. Uh, wow. What a lightweight, I'm telling you. Yeah, you're kind of I, I'm, Okay, I'm not a beer person as per se, but I must say, it's, there's no off taste, and it smells pretty good, smells and great. the color is great for beer, yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. so. I, am a, I am a huge pale ale fan. Mm -hmm. This is like right up my alley. This is beautiful. It is. He loves the pale. Cool. Yeah. I do love the pale. And I love the art, like, you know, the art on the, like, the, they oh, yeah, the bottles. Well, so why, don't you, awesome. so why don't you tell us a little bit about the, the science and, and the history, actually the history of, of yeah. beer and how why we're able to drink such wonderful <laughs> things like we are today. Yes, well, first question. Yeah, uh, beer has been around for a very long time. It, was, uh, it dates back to the early Egyptians. Um, they have... Uh, uh, Drawings and whatnot of them drinking beer and to the Egyptians. First to the, of all. Yeah, to, to the, the Egyptians. Egyptians. Hey. To the Egyptians. Um, yes. Don't interrupt them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, we actually have found pots uh, from Iran that date back seven thousand years that have residue from beer, and it kind of shows that beer was used as a trade. It was used as currency. Um, there's hey, actually smart. Yeah, there's really a smart. Beer. There's a great documentary called How Beer Saved the World, and it goes back and it talks all about how. Uh, Beer throughout the ages has been kind of a lifesaver. It's done a lot of medical advances. We've uh, we've come up with a lot of cool cures. We've ha had a lot of uh, refrigeration techniques that were started back uh, in the industrial era that uh, wow. wouldn't have been around without the uh, need to transport beer. Interesting. So, so basically, interesting, we owe everything today to alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> in a weird way, it makes sense. Beer it makes sense. So uh, that's really cool. I didn't know that about uh, refrigeration and all that being part of ways to, you know, keep beer. Yeah, and to transport it and transport it. Now, how come the English never refrigerate their beer? Uh, well, it really depends on the style of beer that you're drinking because uh, different beers require to be uh, consumed at different temperatures. So, a lot Got of the it. ones that they're making are designed. They're a little, some of them are heavy alcohol content, which generally mm -hmm. you want to drink at more of a room temperature, which is why some of the other ones that I brought I've kind of let sit out for a little while. Ah, and it, it really depends on the interesting. style. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, so there's a so there's a guideline that says if you're making this. Temperature, temperature, temperature. Yeah, and temperature, the cool thing is most, uh, most. It's like a fine wine. It's exactly. Like wine. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of craft brewers these days are going to be putting it on their bottle, serve it in this type of glass at this temperature. So it's oh, we gotta get into the glasses together. at some point. <laughs> there are so many glasses out there. Oh, I, yeah. I am so confused, so confused with the glasses. <laughs> but I am fascinated. Apparently, the color of the glass has something to do with the way it's kept. Oh, you mean oh, like yeah. the bottling? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Um, the reason for that is because uh, a darker beer, no, uh, less light permeates it, so you're not going to have that skunked beer. Um, yes. It, <laughs> <laughs> she I hate hates it. Gunk beer. Yeah, it is the worst thing ever. That's why you'll see like Thank you. like Coronas that are served in the uh, in, in the like clear bottles. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll have one uh, Corona, uh, Corona de Familia, mm -hmm. which is in a brown bottle. It tastes completely different. Never because, had it because all the Coronas are skunked essentially. They are. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's re really no other reason. It's all, the green, all the green, all the green ones, the Greek all the green beer. bottles. But why the skunk beer? Why do you want a beer? You know. 
pieces. Well, you know, it's like an that. acquired taste. Yeah. Ew. It's acquired. Mm. It's well, like that stuff. means you don't know how to taste stuff. So. <laughs> that, that's generally the case. I agree. So, no, Chris. I don't like that. Speaking of, I mean, you're a beer connoisseur, obviously. Uh, so, why don't you tell us about how it? to taste beer? Tell us how to do it. Am okay. I, am I doing it right, first of all? Is this uh, something? <laughs> uh, that, that's a good yeah, start. Yeah, um, up these nose. You have to know how to pour your beer. So when you're going to be pouring a beer, uh, there's a lot of different different theories on it, and there's a lot of different. Uh, each Guinness, for example, has a very strict way that you're supposed to pour their beer. So much so that they send their uh, brewmasters out to different uh, bars, and they will rate the bars depending on how they're pouring their beer. Wow. And it depends on. It, they have to have the Guinness glass. They have to pour it exactly the same. It's a two stage uh, pour process, and uh, it's it gets intense, but. What if you fail? Do <laughs> they take fail. it? Do they take uh, it away from you? No, I don't think they do. I think they just uh, they yell at you or something along those lines. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, take away your how much are they going to yell at you? Maybe after, they, uh, they, they teach you business. how to do it. Right? Yeah, they, they do. They, they, they teach their teach uh, they teach their. Br- My uh, question would be: Do you have to drink from a glass? Can you to drink from a bottle? You can drink from the bottle. The problem yeah. with that is you're not getting the full bouquet of it. You're not going to be uh, when you pour it into the glass. Mm-hmm. You're going to pour it at a uh, an angle or something yeah. like that right there. Yeah. And then once you get about halfway up, you're going to tilt the glass and allow that head to... The foam. Yeah. The, 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 the foam. The foam, forms, yeah. yeah. And with, with that, what you, what you have there is you have all of that, uh, that the good bouquet of, fla- of not flowers, of uh, smells that are coming out. Yeah. How do you call it, how do you call it this, the thing they put in the beer? Hop? The hops? Oh, the, the hops. hops yes. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, the hops are definitely going to be able to smell those. That's where you get a lot of the floral smell. Okay. Oh. Um, and so one of the things that you want to do when you first pour your beer is you want to smell it before you even taste it. I so, do that. Good. It, it's just like wine. Like when you go and taste wine, you you, go, you sniff the wine, you, you agitate it a little bit to get all of the uh, essential oils that are coming out so you can taste yeah. and smell everything. Mm-hmm. And then when you're actually drinking it, you want to uh, inhale through your noses as you're pulling it into your mouth. And oh, I am loving this because I'm doing it so right. If I <laughs> smell and it's something just kind of weird, I'm yeah. like this. I think that's how I do. Uh, wi- I think good. that's how I do wine. Yeah, too. you know that's that's, that's that how way. a lot of people do even food because most of what your t- your tasting comes through your nose. That's mm. right. That's and and so it's a it's a completely different experience when you don't have any. What if I just poured it into my nose? Um, <laughs> No, not don't do that. I did that in college once. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, actually, it's funny you say that. So, I so, inadvertently did that in yeah, college. <laughs> You've done a lot of things in college we probably shouldn't talk about. Don't talk about it. Uh, but I remember in college, they would it would be a, a party foul, if mm-hmm. you want to call it that, where you, you know, you'd have the keg and you'd, pour, you'd have to do it without trying to put any head on it. Yeah. I remember that was like the, <laughs> well, that was well, because the when key. it's coming out of a keg, um, it, it's really... It sounded naughty. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. You don't yeah. want head in that case. In yes. college, you want no. a lot of head, but not that kind of head. <laughs> well, no, but I remember that being. I remember that being. Well, that. that's probably a good point. But I well, just remember that being. I remember that being like the thing. Like, oh, don't, uh, Tomasa, the, the the pouring again because I got too much. <laughs> head and that's really it. easy to do out of a, of a tap like that. It's uh, definitely a, a harder thing to do out of a bottle, but. Still, some of the more uh, frothy beers, are, you're gonna get that giant head on it, and that's that's where it comes into the. Uh... <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I have a I have a question. So, there is there a beer that's better as a draft versus a bottle? Oh, I think. Is there anything that, that's, that's actually a great question? I um, disagree. Question. Generally, I like everything off tap better. It, it, they they taste similar, but they can be completely different as well because. There's a lot that goes into uh, transporting the beer when it's in the bottles that can ruin the beer. Like if, if it gets left out and you mm-hmm. too much light gets onto it, it might get slightly skunked. It might get too oxidized. Whereas in a keg, you ha- you don't have any of those issues. Right, right. Um, right. And, and it's easier to control the temperatures. Uh, having a kegerator is one of the best things that I've mm. ever, ever done. Ooh, how much of one of those? <laughs> uh, where do I, actually, where do I get that? Uh, you can get them at uh, at any like Costco. They have them for around four hundred dollars, so it's not that bad. That's not it, bad. It, and like you can get them online for cheaper than that. I actually got mine from an old boss. Uh, he told me to make it disappear. <laughs> and uh, That's made it disappear no right problem. in my living room. Yeah, no problem, yeah. boss. No problem about that. <laughs> yeah. so, wait, so you put it into your living room? Uh, I, I had a small apartment at the time. So you would prefer, for the most part, you prefer uh, tap versus, yes. versus yeah. bottle. Yeah. Interesting. So what's the so, difference? I have on top of that. Yes. You know when you another good question. It's because we go to England. Uh-huh. I go to England a lot. Uh, they pump it mm-hmm. versus say like a CO two 
that we yeah. have here. Mm -hmm. What's, is there a big difference in that? What's the difference, if there is a difference? Um, the, one of the big differences is, is just the way that, the, the styles of beers that they have. Um, oh, okay. And so a, a lot of the ales that they're using, they, it's, it's a, a better uh, delivery service or delivery way to uh, pump it. Um, it essentially does the same thing. Uh, it's just cooler. It just, it just I just cooler. love that. Um, <laughs> I love the pumping. And then, oh my, and then so you awesome. get into casks as well, which which are just <sighs> yeah. So like aged in cask, but beer is it's awesome. I bought. I think you were talking about this earlier. You you spent so much money on like just a handful of beers. Yeah. I did this. I bought. We went somewhere and I bought like a I don't like a twenty dollar. It was like a twenty two dollar bottle. bottle of beer. And yeah. It was. It was one that was. And you're like uh, looking at it. So aged 20, in a seriously. I'm like, yeah. It was wow. aged in a cask and. How was so it? Fan. Well, it was good. It was good, but it wasn't $22 yeah. or $21 mm -hmm. good. What, one of the cool things about that is a lot of the craft brewers around the United States are getting into casking. So you're going to find uh, uh, bars, like I go to one in San Diego called Churchill's, that they every okay. month they have two casks that are right, that are there that are tapped. You can see, oh really? And so so they're right there for you to see. And um, I'm going to church. Sam, you got to. They, they've got they've got like, like 400 beers. We are. Yeah, but, oh. but we are going. We are. But it's really interesting because <laughs> all the cask beers are uh, warm as well. Uh, ah. So it's it's a it's a different experience. So you can take uh, a beer that you've had before and then have it on cask. Completely different experience. Mm. Wow. Hmm. Well, speaking of experiences and different experiences, uh, what about the styles and uh, of beer and and where they're most popular? Well, that's a uh, very interesting thing. There, there has been uh, back in like the '80s, there was a very uh, one style of beer. There was just the American ale, the your Budweiser, your Miller, your Coors. But now it's with all these craft breweries, they're going back and they're looking um, at these old styles that have haven't been used in ages. Um, you got you get your lambics. You have all sorts of uh, crazy styles that even the brewers are creating new ones every day. Um, so there are infinite amounts of styles, and if you brew at home, you can mix and match. You can just play with them. It depends on the yeast. It depends on the hops that you use, uh, the brewing style. It's there, there's infinite amount. Let's get wow. to let's get the brass tacks here. Yes, brass tacks. Which state has the best beer? Uh, see, which now, state? I want to know which state. Now you're going to which get, region? <laughs> which region? Although we are keeping it U.S. Yes, U.S. Okay. state. That's okay. the only. That'll country. be another oh, state. I was going to say. <laughs> foreign beers. Yeah, Turkish so beers. I just Turkish want to know beer. because because I, I I'm a, I'm I'm a big fan of like the you know I call them microbreweries. I don't know if that's the appropriate mm -hmm. thing to call them, but I'm a big fan of those. So I'm always interested because everybody says they have the best. Yeah. I want to know once and for all who has the best. Oh, see, now you're going to get me in trouble with your East Coast breweries. Um, <laughs> well, in your experience, I mean, uh, in, in my experience, what I, do you prefer? I have the most experience with San because I'm from San Diego originally, and San Diego is a mecca for beer. Uh, I was I'm planning a birthday party for my buddy next weekend, and we looked at North County breweries. We're going to do some brewery tours. Mm. There are about 20 in North County alone. Ooh, and wow. they're, they're adding new ones every day. I think they the added uh, around 400 new breweries last year in, in the United States alone. Wow. Um, and 370 were in San Diego. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, I, I mean, you've got your places like, like up in Portland, uh, up in the Pacific Northwest, some amazing breweries. East Coast has some great ones as well. Um, it's really becoming everywhere. Like the United States, in its in and of itself, is a great brewery uh, country. Now. I mean, yeah, the stone. We're a bunch of drunks, basically. Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, we for good beer. Yeah, I like I like the fact that it, well, you were just saying in the '80s or whatever, it was pretty basic. Yeah. Where now it seems like it, you can get literally everything. It seems like it. Oh yeah, it's it's a renaissance of beer right now. It's a it's a good time to be a beer drinker. So basically, the answer to the question of you where do you find that? the best beers. <laughs> California is pretty much everywhere, right? Yeah, there, there is no bad place now to find to find good craft beer. Yeah, but beer. you say California. Because yeah, California. <laughs> California is. We a great are. Place. We love Even LA is starting to become a really cool uh, mecca for beer. Wow, which it I wasn't did not know that until was... until about two years ago. There there was barely any breweries, and now you they're opening up every day. So, do you have a favorite brewery? Do you have a favorite uh, <sighs> that you? That that is a tough choice. Um. I've always been a big fan of Lost Abbey. Uh, Lost Abbey beers there out of San Marcos, California. Okay. Um, they they make some really cool, different, they, they have some weird styles that they like to do. Um, and I'm a big fan of their sours that they do. They do one for, actually, for Churchill's every year. 
uh, it's called Churchill's Finest Hour. This year they did Churchill's Finest Sour. <laughs> I have never had brilliant. a sour. I don't even know what that is. Oh, you, 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 just wait. Just wait. <laughs> yes. But how about Stone Brewery? The, that's Stone. It's it's huge. It's great. Um, one of the cool things about Stone is uh, they're they've been around for long enough now that they're getting a lot of respect. They were the number seven, I believe, uh, on the list oh. of top ten uh, top ten breweries in the United States. Nice. Uh, actually, Three Floyds, the one that we're drinking now, was, was number one. So. No kidding. And I love their black market Hefeweizen. They don't make it often. They don't. Uh, they don't. Hefeweizen. Uh, where, where would I find it? Where would I find that beer? Uh, th this one here? Yeah. Um, you're going to have to go to the Midwest to find it. Oh. Or you might be able to find it at some places like the, the one we were talking about earlier, Plaza Market. Yeah. Uh, they do a lot of trades with other uh, liquor stores around the United States. And that's in L.A.? Yeah, that is in L.A. It's in El Monte. Gotcha. So it's a little ways away. Gotcha. Wow. So uh, why don't we far. take this moment here to uh, have a look at another beer? Yeah. Oh yeah. Sounds and actually, good. while we're doing that, do we let's uh, let's talk about some of the top breweries in the U.S. Did we talk about that? I think you've had enough. <laughs> <laughs> Are you saying we did? <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Did we? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Well, the show is going rogue. Well, let, no, no, no. <laughs> well, here's, well, this is a good one. You, this is a question that, that you had brought up uh, before the show started, which is comparing the international beers with the domestic beers. Now, where where has where does America rank? Where where is America yes. now as compared to the rest of the world in in, in respect maybe? Uh, in respect, we're getting quite a bit of respect. Um, I, I would say that the United States. Go, either goes big or goes home, and yeah. uh, right now we're going big in beer. Uh, the cool thing is th companies like Stone and uh, a few of the other big breweries, they're actually doing some stuff in Europe where Stone's considering opening, uh, I believe they're going forward with it, and opening their own uh, brewery. And Wow. wow. Uh, I believe, I, I don't know where it's exactly going to be. It's, it's going to be in Europe somewhere. So. I like that idea a lot. Well, you know, when you think about Europe, Germany, is, they, they love their beer. You know Thank that. You. Oh, yeah. Beer, beer, beer. I'm there. always going to be a big fan of Belgian Oktoberfest, style. Oktoberfest, guys. Huh? Yeah, I'm always a big fan of Belgian East. Um, and what is this? Yep. This What we're drinking now is Tappet uh, IPA. It's their India Pale Ale. Um, it is, uh, it got first place at, uh, the, I believe, Ooh. the Denver Beer Festival. It's, it's one of the biggest ones. Um, it's a tiny little startup out of San Luis Obispo. Ooh, um, it's you get a lot of the citrus on the nose. It's, yeah, definitely. It is it's, a, it's quite a different smell than the last beer. Yeah, I need for mine. Don't wow. forget that. <laughs> Are you trying to get them drunk? Oh, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm trying to do. Yeah, no, it, it's a, it's a very unique. Uh, oh, it, They're uh, flowery. One of the problems with Citrusy. with, uh, with yeah, beers now is IPAs are becoming like the standard. And so everyone's creating their own IPA, and it's really hard to distinguish between between any of them. Woo. And it's all about the hops that they use. That's what sets it apart. Right? Sam's eyes yes. are watering. <laughs> I can really smell. I can really taste the uh, the flora of mm -hmm. whatever's in here. That's really good. What was this again? Say that again. Tap it. Tap it. Tap it. Yeah, tap it. IPA. What's the style? Oh, it's an IPA. Yeah, oh, and that's good. That doesn't. You know what? Okay. See, I like now, it. There's now, when you taste. say when you say that. IPA, you mean yeah. Indian Pale Ale? Uh, India Pale Ale. Uh, India is that from India? Uh, Does the style or no? So no, that's, that's a good question. That's a serious question. Yeah, that's I don't a good. Know. People, that question. people probably don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this the style originated in Europe. Um, I actually don't know too much on the answer on this one, unfortunately. Um, but you know what? Get Maybe out. there must be something because <laughs> they, can, they can come up with the name. I'm sure there must yeah. be some sort is, of connection. So the difference, uh, I mean, is there more hops in it? Is it? Yeah, they add it? The, the it has a lot more, a lot higher IBUs, uh, international bittering units. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and so it, you I do nodded have, my head like I knew what you were talking about. <laughs> and so yeah, the, the hops are what add the bitterness to it. Um, and it, it's the, there's two different stages of you can add uh, the, there's a dry hopping, which is what you're going to be getting uh, a lot of the. Um, the Which, smells from. Oh, I thought that's what your dog did to your leg. No, I know. No, that's, that's I was dry like dry hopping. hopping. Oh, What's I gotcha. happening here? <laughs> so, so the answer to that question about who's better, America, uh, domestic or inter international beers, it's really we're 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 coming up there. Yeah, we're, we are definitely coming up. I, I would say that we are right now at the forefront of it. We're the forerunners. Wow. So. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. See, I always had the I always had the impression that like an English beer was like the 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 one you wanted to get to. they they have a lot of older breweries um and a lot 
a lot of them that have been around for. There's one that's going to be uh, going on its 1,000 year anniversary. Wow. Hold on, I'm kind of confused. Is it years. England Are they monks? or Germany? <laughs> yes. Which one is the oldest? Because uh, I, 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 I always thought it was Germany. Germany, yes. It is Germany. Um, we won't. <laughs> Wait, right. you're not German. No, I'm not German. <laughs> German. I was curious, but I, I always thought it was well, German. They they drink beer in their breakfast. Seriously. Yeah, I, I know a couple that. people that do that beer. too. Yeah, I know somebody who puts that beer this, in their cereal. Yeah. Really? I did that this morning. No, okay. not the beer in the cereal. This is why Chris well, is on the show. Actually, one of the cool things is uh, when I was on a tour at Stone, and they were talking about uh, the first stage, um, the wort that they created, which is uh, basically the uh, barley and the water mix. Mm-hmm. It smells just like cereal, and wow. if if you drink it, mm-hmm. it, it is a really really healthy breakfast drink. That's and amazing. I, know, you know, I, know, I was stoned on a you're tour. You're just you're just uh, you're just opening the door for me right <laughs> now. No, for both of them, I feel like I'm having it. <laughs> See, it's well, no, not a bad thing. You went on a on a stone tour, and I went on a tour stone. That's no, so. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, Sam. Yeah, that's right. Sam, you. So, uh, I guess the next question is, uh, what what are the, the, the macro breweries doing to combat the uh, the growing uh, popularity of micro brewing and craft brewing? That is a... a <laughs> the, I, I've never been a big fan of macro brews. Um, the, the thing that they're trying to do now, um, their sales are being cut quite a bit. Like, last year... Uh, Craft beer was 10% of the market. Uh, compared to 10 years ago, it was barely one or two percent. Wow. 10%. So that's that may not seem like mu- like much when you're comparing like 90%, but that's billions of dollars leaving the uh, bank accounts of these macro brews. So what they're trying to do um, is they're fighting for shelf space. That's one of the big things because when you walk in, look at what's at eye level. That's generally what people are going to buy the most, and right. a lot of times it's the Coors Bud. Uh, crap like that. The crap. Yes, yes. Um, I mean, it tastes okay with the ping pong ball in it. Um, but, but the, uh, so what they're also trying to do is they're going and they're buying up all these little micro brews that, uh, the, the little craft brews, and they're calling them the same thing. So, like, you have Goose Island out in uh, Chicago, one of my favorite brewers of all time, uh, got bought out by uh, AB InBev. And that's, those are the guys that make Bud Light and, and Bud. And so it, they're keeping a lot of it the same, but I, I, if, you, if you taste uh, Goose Island from before it was sold to after, you can definitely tell the shift and the, the change in, in uh, flavor. So To stop the competition? Is that what it yeah, is? They, to buy it up or before it gets exactly. big? Yeah, so they're, they're trying to buy it up, and, and not necessarily before it gets big. Even if, it, even if it's already big, they're bo- trying to buy them up, Right. Um, which is cool because you have these companies that refuse to sell out, Right. and those are the ones that you can tell really have the passion. There, there's... I mean, there's not a lot of passion in creating Bud Light. Let's let's be honest on, on that one. There is Bud. <laughs> there is Bud Platinum now, though. <laughs> or and titanium. So that, I, and that, the, the the black the black edition that they're doing. Yes. And that, that's all trying to make fake craft beer. And they're they're looking and they're saying, okay, well, people like hoppier beer now, so we're gonna just add a bunch of random hops. But see, so no one's gonna take Bud seriously when they're trying to do these other things because they they're the big corporate kind of. Thing, I would think, yeah. right? Is that, so they'll never even, even as, as hard as they try, no one's going to But really. it, they're fooling a lot of people because a lot of people like Blue Moon and a lot of people like Shock Top. Those are all owned by the big companies. Oh, I love Shock Top. Yeah, and it, I, uh, I believe that one is, is uh, uh, I want to say Miller or Coors that own that one. What about Stella? Oh, I love uh, Stella, I believe, is an AB InBev product. product. So oh. same people that own uh, Anheuser-Busch. Yeah, but it's, it's available. See, these things are available. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, and more and more, you're finding bars that have craft beers on tap and, and local breweries. Like, even if you go to a California Pizza Kitchen now, they have local craft breweries. Yeah. Uh, nice. So, do you think it's because of the pricing, maybe the deal from the bigger companies, like beer producing companies, whatever you call it? Maybe they offer a better deal for the bars, and they prefer those. Oh yeah. Is that why? Yeah, and, and still, know? and still, you don't have as many people. Is it's starting to be a, a more popular trend, but there's not as many people that are really caring about their beers. Uh, but uh, like I said, it's starting to become a more uh, prevalent thing. People are like, no, I want a craft beer. I'm gonna be pretentious that's, about my beer today. And I think that's why I, you see it. You see it more and more. I feel like there's a gastro pub like popping exactly. up everywhere now. Yeah. And I love gastro. Yeah, I get yeah. gas at the pub myself. Well, that's, <laughs> this is why Sam and I. This is why Sam and I don't hang out. Hold at the on, pub gastro anymore. pub is the fancier one, right? It's like a little bit. Well, you know, they, I, they do the craft beers. 
right? Yeah. That's, I mean, it's their whole list is it's no domestic. It's not yeah. Bud Light. It's not, you know, any of those things. It's all the, like, the California ones mm-hmm. and the crafts and things like that. And, and you're getting bars like that that are coming out. They used to have, like, two or three taps. Now you're getting places that have 40 taps. Yeah. And so the choices out there are just insane. That's yeah. a lot of taps. Hey, listen, uh, I'm going to just <laughs> butt in here real quick and say I think it's time for a little break. And when we come back, we'll uh, try another beer and maybe talk a little bit more about what's happening and how you can get involved in craft brewing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll see you in a minute. Come on. Man is getting us totally wasted and my, here today. And my new best friend. <laughs> yes, I, I've loved you since I met you, man. We're all. I gotta tell you how much Get, I love getting you. a little, little uh, awkward in here now. <laughs> So we're talking just about now. so we're just talking about craft beers and, and then like the history and science and what you know what certain beers mean and whatnot. We've already tried if you have, if you're just tuning in. We've already tried a few of the beers that Chris has brought. Um, so we'll just continue doing that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I know Sam, you got some few, uh, more questions to ask while he's doing that. Well, Chris, uh, while you're uh, pouring out that beer in a hurry, <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me ask you: uh, Do you have a, a blog or a website or something where people can uh, get in touch with you or yeah. follow you? Yeah. Um, you can actually find me on uh, uh, heavy metal heavy metal barware dot com. Um, <laughs> nice. Heavy metal I love it. That is great. It's, uh, yeah. it's it's actually promoting my new company, and then uh, I'm also going to be starting a blog on it about beer, um, tasting beer. Uh, the, a lot of just beer related happy sunshine love things like that. Good things. Sounds good to me. <laughs> we can so, all use a little bit more of that. So heavy metal. Heavy heavy metal barware dot com. Heavy heavy. <laughs> Stop wasted. Stop waiting, Sam. Yes. Heavy metal barware dot com. That's great. So, are you guys going to be producing products? And if so, did you bring anything to show us? Today? I did. I did. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Every drop. Hey, That's don't delicious. waste it. Um, exactly. So, I actually just created my first product. It's uh, releasing this week. It is a bottle opener. Um, what the kind of the concept that we're going for is we're doing a bunch of like industrial style bar products. So we have our just it's a giant chunk of metal that we turn into a bottle opener. Uh, we also have a tap handle that's coming out that's made out of twisted rebar. Wow, um, nice. And then we have a bunch of other custom pieces that we do, and uh, been talking to a few bars that are interested in having me uh, design some things for them. So I'm very that's excited about it. Fantastic. That's really cool. Yeah. We'll uh, definitely send people along to your website, man. Thank Absolutely. you. Thanks. Ooh, this is dark. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, this looks Thank good. You. This looks like Coca Cola. Right, so, so, what so what are we drinking here? Uh, this is the uh, Terrapin. Let me get the entire uh, name for this. It's the Terrapin. Uh, is the name of the brewery. Muhu Oatmeal Milk Stout. Oh, this and oh, it tastes are... like chocolate milk. Is uh... wow, it smells like chocolate. Yeah, it's kind of got that uh, like Guinness smell to it. A little bit, yeah. Uh, it's... Although I've had the Guinness Stout yeah. before. And, and the, the cool thing about this, like we were talking earlier, uh, we were asking where the best beer places are. Um, and I was ma- ma- saying mainly West Coast and then uh, Northeast. Right. This is out of Athens, Georgia. Ah. So you're finding it everywhere that beer, uh, good craft beer is becoming more prevalent. Wow. This has got a punch to it. Yeah. That is, is that it? is like a chocolate milk. Yeah, it tastes just like chocolate milk. That's crazy. I, I never remember chocolate milk tasting like this. <laughs> maybe, maybe you guys... <laughs> Sam's not going to remember too much here in a little bit anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so Athens, Georgia. Athens, Georgia, yeah. Wow. Get on you, Georgia. Let's talk about home brewing. Yes. And, yes. And what people can do besides just going out and buying these amazing beers that are brewed in these little really cool uh, craft beer places. What what can we do at home with today's technology to uh, emulate this kind of beer making and to maybe enjoy our own little hobby because it's a growing <laughs> hobby. <laughs> like really like what's is. the starter? What do we need to start one? Yeah, That's you know, thing. it's a minimum of that investment of uh, I was actually looking at it this morning uh, of about fifty dollars to get a one gallon beer kit. Uh, so it costs <laughs> next to nothing. 
Could I do that? <laughs> I think you've had enough there, Scott. <laughs> $50. Yeah, $50. And I mean, that's just the base. It gives you a, a, a fermenting jug, and it gives you a little bit of the uh, the extract. So it's an extract brewing technique instead of uh, instead of all grain, which is more advanced technique. So, What's the difference? What's a extract versus uh, all grain? Uh, extract, it, it basically comes in a little canner pouch, and it's... The first step is already taken care of for you, so you don't have to take the the, the malts and you don't have to boil Fermented. them. Well, the, the, they all everything ferments at the very last stage, but at the beginning when you're doing all grain, you boil the grains and you you get that uh, wort, and that's essentially the extract creates the wort for you. You just pour it in and, and you're done. Got it. So it's a lot easier. It's a really great way to learn. Um, it's a good first first step. I, if you've never done brewing before, I would suggest starting with extract brewing, and go, moving on from there. It's also a lot cheaper. And I won't blow up my uh, closet. You still might. You still have it for a minute. Um. Now, what kind of beer do you end up with in these kind of starter kits? Is it just regular domestic kind of beer? Or no. Can you um, get all kinds of different styles? Yeah, you can get... Uh, there's a lot of companies that do clones. So clones of, like, say, a Stone IPA or um, uh, a Racer 5. You're going to find a lot of clones for those that they sell the extract for it, and then all you have to do is put the ingredients together, boil it, ferment it, and you're good to go. So how do I so if, so if everybody's buying the same stuff? Let's, let's just say everybody's got the same starter yeah. kit. How do I make mine different from somebody else's? Is is it a part of how long you boil it? Is it is it something where how long you ferment it? I mean, how does I mean what is the I don't know anything about it, but you know it's all of those things combined. Um, and that's when so when you boil it, when you ferment it, uh, the the yeasts and the uh, other ingredients that you use, the type of hops. There's hundreds of types of hops now. Um, they, I just downloaded a PDF of uh, all the different hop varieties that are available in the United States, and it was about 60 pages of just hops. Oh. Um, and, it, but the, and they all have a different characteristic to them. So it's one of those things where you have to just experiment with it. You can buy different ones. Like There's so many resources online that allow you to, uh, like uh, Midwest Brewing has all the ingredients, all the uh, equipment that you're going to need. Mm -hmm. And then there's there's a hundred. I, I looked it up. There's 67 million hits when I typed in home brewing this morning. Wow. So we should be doing a show about home brewing from here on out. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> That's right. We'll be called Ten Reasons Why Home Brewing Rocks That's every right. week. So wait. So so where can where, what's the best place? Where's the best place for someone to go and and start? with this is there like a site that there's yeah, like a main you know type in home brewing in google you're gonna get like northern brewing uh, midwest brewing there's uh, tons of equipment uh, companies that sell starter kits that range from that 50 dollars and go all the way up to like five six seven all the way up into thousands of dollars there's a system called um the brew magic and one of the cool things is about this system it's fully automated so it has a little computer in there that you type in how long you want it to boil, how long you want it to go to the secondary boil, etc. But how do you know those numbers? Uh, just experimenting. Uh, you, uh -huh. you, can, you can look at recipes. Uh, people, there's tons and tons of websites where people have posted their recipes, so you can m kind of mimic what they've done and modify it to create your own beer. Cool. Um, so how much how much room would I need to do this? Uh, hey, hey, what's that, happening here? I'm just curious. Well, I'm just curious if someone wanted to start one. He's you know, for me, it could be you know if it takes up the whole kitchen. I don't know. I'm just saying. You know, what, how much room would I need to do something? Not like that? much actually. You would just need uh you would need a boil pot. Uh, so that's generally most people have one. Uh, like I, I would just say, a big a, a big five a five to ten depending on how much you're uh, gotcha. how much you're gonna be cooking. Oh, it'll be a lot. Okay, it'll so it'll be a lot. Um, <laughs> Uh, and, and then all, all it really is is just uh, having a place to ferment it, which uh, generally a lot of my friends and what I've done in the past is you put it in, in your closet, nice cool temperature. Oh right. Um, just to let it uh, let it mellow for the amount of time in your that you closet? need to. Gotcha. Let yeah. it mellow. So do you smell beer for a while? That means. I always smell beer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it out. I've got for two, sure. two more that I want to share with you. Is, guys. is there a favorite? Uh, is there a favorite of of the ones that you're going to show us today that you have? Um. It, you know, the, la the last one that I have for you guys, I haven't had it yet. My, my buddies at uh, Plaza Market hooked me up. They uh, recommended an amazing sour. Um, so I, I haven't had this one, but this I'm very excited. I'm excited uh, too. It, no, this one right here is a barley wine. This one is going to uh, be very interesting. Um, Anytime very you say interesting, <laughs> it's be a little queasy. <laughs> Well, th this one is a, a very high alcohol content. Um, oh, we that, Sam does not need any of that. <laughs> and that's one of the things you'll find, you'll find with different beers is there's a, definitely a time to age them. Um, when you're, you when you have a thing like an IPA, which has a lot of hops, you're not going to want to age that too long. That's why Stone uh, has a beer right now called the Enjoy By, 
and they it comes out just once one time each beer and it will uh, be like enjoy by 420 that's the one that's out right now and you're supposed to drink it before that because a lot of people have have it in their mind that they want to age uh, an IPA 420 is that a <laughs> that's a, is that a time? I think that's a marijuana yeah, reference yeah that, that is a marijuana <laughs> reference um, the next the next one is enjoy by 517 that's the one that they're uh, releasing uh, this week uh, which it's not a marijuana it's not a marijuana <laughs> but but when you have these uh, beers that are uh, higher alcohol content and uh, they have the yeast in the bottle still a lot of them uh, that's when you're going to want to age it. So people are aging beers just like wines now uh, up to 10 to uh, 5 to 10 years. And obviously those are the ones that are going to cost you a good $20, $30. Yeah, you know, not necessarily. You can get a good $10 bottle of beer and you're going to want to age some well, of those as well. But the thing now is, that's you, any bar in California. But but yeah, you <laughs> want to buy two of them so you can taste one at, at the beginning and then age it and let it sit for a while and then taste it later. Um, I'd, I'd suggest just buying six of them and enjoy them all the time. Chris, seriously, we're going to be best friends. (laughs) Seriously. Thank you. I think uh, we just found our fourth host here. I think we did. I think we did. (laughs) I'm afraid we are getting drunk here. Wow. So what was was the name of this one again? Oh, sorry. Uh, This smells interesting. This This smells like bread a little bit. Yeah. uh, This is the Southern Tier. uh, (laughs) I'm serious. This is an Oak Age Imperial uh, Wild Style, or Barley Wine Style Ale. Uh, It's called the uh, Backburner. You know, it looks oh, like this, a rocket ship. Oh, hold on, what Ooh, that looks is. Like a Again, that's so, <laughs> cl- it's so, there's no taste, there's no aftertaste. Uh, there's hey, a great there's no taste. taste. No, no, it's a great taste. There's just no, uh, no lingering. Hold on. This is my favorite this? so far. Now, do we know how long this was aged? Uh, it, my guess is not too long. I actually picked it up yesterday. Um, oh, I, see. I, I I'm going to go pick up another bottle as well because I broke the cardinal rule. Holy shizam, this is 9.6. <laughs> Oh yeah, nine point six. Dude, this is the best one right. yet. I, I like this. <laughs> this one's really good. This one's really good. Nine point six. And uh, still, you know, I'm a big like I said, I'm a big pale ale guy. I really like that one a You're lot. A little but pale, that, yes, I am. But that IPA was still <laughs> no, I'm yeah. Really good. And one of the cool things, is, like even this one, they tell you the ingredients that are in it, like what sort of malts they used, and uh, like they they use uh, kettle uh, kettle hops, chinook hops, uh, tons tons of cra- crazy aroma hops. They use uh, ulamate. I believe that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> and, then, and then they show the dry hops. So they tell you exactly what type of hops are used, and so you can kind of guess what the flavor profile of those hops I should are. Have some water. So I could go <laughs> to like I could water. go to like the northernbrewer.com and get all that stuff. Yeah, I could. They have all the yeah. ingredients and stuff. They, like they do. Um, and that's they, great. Yeah, it's a really great. Uh, Google is awesome. Wow, it is. <laughs> I just Google it. I'm looking through this. It's oh, it's a great website. Like if you go to their kits, you can see all of the kits that they have available. Wow. And I believe that's the one that has the $50 kit, and it's just an extract kit. And then you yeah. can go up to All Grain, which is going to cost you quite a bit more. Me and one of my friends are going to be starting an All Grain brewing system. Um, and then another one of, the, one of my good friends that I've homebrewed before, he is uh, actually starting his own brewery this year down in San Diego. He is also my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, another question. What do you do with the beer once you brew it? I mean, not as a joke, but I mean, do you, how do you store it? Uh, storing beer is there, there's a lot of different theories on it. Um, some people tell you to put it put the beer on its side. Uh, most of the beer the breweries that I've talked to have said that that's a bad idea, especially when it, it has the cork on the top. Um, so you want to store it uh, st- uh, uh, standing upright. You also don't want to store it in the refrigerator because the refrigerator is meant to dry things out. So if you have yeah. a beer that has a cork top, it's just going to dry that cork out, oh, right. and you're just going to have issues there. Um, you want to store it in a dark place uh, that has a constant temperature of around 55 degrees. Um, like and, a basement. Or- yeah, exactly. And then you get some of these beers that that's the optimal serving temperature, like a barley wine or uh, some, some, some other uh, styles like along that. Is this a barley wine? It is. Wow, I like this. It is good. There's half a bottle of course you, Of course yeah. you like it. It's almost 10% alcohol. <laughs> Well, there, there's some breweries that are making, <laughs> making beers that are upwards of 40% alcohol by volume now. Good gracious. Are those the ones that have like a brandy, like a, is there like actual brandy and no, everything like that? No, it it, just... it's, it's, it's straight beer. It's just the four ingredients, the malts, oh, water, uh, hops, gosh. and uh, yeast. It, wow. But, they, but the way that they brew it is is just insane. And the way they age it and ferment it. And That's amazing. I, I haven't had it because it costs a couple hundred dollars I, a I bottle. I can see that. I um, can see that. I can see that. <laughs> wow. Well, I must Dude. say this has been one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> let's uh, let's crack open another one here. This is yes, yeah, uh, so it's about time to uh, uh, okay. say goodbye. <laughs> this is wow, a special one that I bought. 
Oh, this is them. That's kind of probably should probably should have done this before no, uh, no, we started this talking. Is, this is great. This is great. <laughs> all right, drum we'll have, we'll have <laughs> tens- <laughs> little tension music. That's yeah, all I'll have. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully there's nothing uh, breakable in here. Um, I'll help you. Oh, thank well, you. Just our egos. Just our yes. egos. Just our egos. <laughs> Yours? You can drink it. <laughs> you did not like the, the barley wine. No, 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 it's heavy for me. It's is just it too success? heavy. It might be. I'm a, I'm a little worried about what this cork looks like. So now, we'll, have, we'll see uh, see how it turns out. Have you wow. ever had this? You've never had. This I've never before. had this one before. This is a. Uh, What's it called? It's called Vlad the Imp Ailer. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, baby, Vlad the, the Imp Ailer. Northwest style sour ale. Um, Who's it, the brewery? Oh, the uh, Cascade Brewing. So, Vlad the Imp I, <laughs> I have to say I'm excited about this one. Uh, they, they had about four or five different uh, styles of Vlad the, or, uh, of Cascade uh, Sours. And uh, this one was the one he, uh, Sam at uh, Plaza Market recommended to me. So, so what is Sam, the- Sam, I like that guy. What is the main difference, but what, what, what makes it a sour? Uh, just a lot of the uh, a lot of the sours you. have a wild, <laughs> wild yeast in it. And so okay. it's just the way that it's fermented. Seriously. Um, gotcha. <laughs> I'm not I think sure Sam is getting a little toasted. Yes, do you want to help me out here? <laughs> no, that's all you. <laughs> oh my goodness, I need to catch up Sam, with you guys. Sam will close the show when we're done with all this. <laughs> yes, I will. I am somebody, and this is that guy's over there, and he's with me sometimes, too. <laughs> no, this is what's going to happen. I'll punch all three of you, and then I'll be like, yeah. Are you going to punch no. us? Hold on. Why are you going to punch Chris? Chris? Can. I, I can go less. He's our guest. <laughs> Possibly. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. This almost smells like it, it, it has a champagne kind of... Yeah. Wow. This is interesting. It very is, citrus. It was almost like a very cider. Citrus. Yeah, like a cider. A l- little bit like a cider. It's just a, a, a very unique this style. This is the color. Look at it. Um, all right. Cheers. 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 And I will check his reaction first because first I'm trying. It is. It's kind of like a. Wow. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> No, you know what? That's Very really citrusy. good. It's like it does. It tastes like a champagne, yeah. like cider. It's a champagne, like a cider a beer. Slash champagne. <laughs> That's really. Remember that? That is really good. <laughs> that is really good. Yeah, it's a very. Like, what did you? What, what's your opinion? I'm I'm very happy with it. Um, not the best sour I've ever had, but it's very good. Um, definitely uh definitely gonna get wow. another one of these to wow. age when I get another that is, paycheck. That is definitely it's sour. To do that. It's that is sour. Age. How much? Yeah, this, how this much is I, a I bottle? Uh, th- uh, this one I paid fifty dollars a bottle. Wow. Fifty dollars a bottle. Well, I'm honored that you would open it up with us. I you know really what? So I am my more question than would be: so you would buy this? It's better to just age. You know, uh, for this one, I would, I would age it a little while. Um, because and, it's too sharp. Is that why? Because it's no, no, it's supposed to be that sharp. Okay. Um, since amazing. it is a sour. Hmm. Wait, so how wait how long do you know it, it how long how long do you I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this out I will get this out because you buy it at the you buy it at the store how do you how do you know when it was made and how long it's been aging generally on the bottle they will uh, tell you the uh, the bottle date like the, um, the, bo- the born date yeah whatever. exactly the date that it was bottled in and put and put into the uh, oh, system that's really cool so wow um, and, and so cheers, that, everybody <laughs> cheers cheers look she's two fisted <laughs> We should just do a mon. <laughs> we should do a montage of this at some point. Just yeah. be like, Ooh, cheers! Cheers! cheers, cheers. Some will be gone. So like, are you trying through. two different beers? Then? Yes, I am. I'm not sure you should mix like that. Yeah. I'm gone already. It's fine. Yeah, she is gone. I think you can see it. <laughs> Her I eyes feel are like watering. I'm playing that game. What is that game? You flip the cup. Flip All right, cup. flip cup. There you go. It's the name. <laughs> I like that this a, stuff. That it's was a little a, expensive for my palate and wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, tell us one more time how we can uh, how we can get a hold of you, how fans can get a hold of yeah, you, you. Your website. Yeah, you can go to heavymetalbarware.com, um, and you can look at my products. You can follow my blog. You can uh, talk to me. Send me an email. The contact form on there, and uh, love to talk to you about beer. Chris, yeah. this was a, this was an awesome time to have you on. Yeah, thank you so awesome. much for sharing all this. Thank stuff. Yeah, no, problem. really, thank you for inviting me. And interesting facts for sure. Oh my god, <laughs> yeah, that you know I didn't know. I learned a lot about beer today. Hey, beer and was a Chris, And I knew I know that we are hanging out a lot. Good. After I am good. not remembering anything that we learned today. <laughs> all right, we need well, to these beers. Um, you know, say unfortunately we have to say goodbye, but we're gonna stick around and drink some beer. But we will see you next time. Thanks for joining us on Ten Reasons Why Show. Come to our uh, webpage, uh, actually YouTube page. Subscribe to us and get a whole. 
hold of Chris. Good guy. Yes. Lots of beer. Thank you. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Enjoy. Really cool, uh, Cheers. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye